Good morning, guys, and happy holidays. We are getting really close to Christmas, so obviously I've been thinking about Christmas shopping and doing some Christmas shopping. And the most difficult person to shop for is by far Sean. And he's an adult, he has everything, he has a boat. So what on earth do you get somebody who already has a boat, has everything, lives on a boat, has very little space for stuff. Hmm. I'm happy to share that I found the perfect gift for him. A yacht, and not just any yacht, a beautiful Nordhaven 68 called Hokulani. She's our neighbor here at Shoal Shoal Bay Marina in Seattle. We walk by here all the time, and I was fortunate enough to get Sean a full boat tour. And thanks to the amazing team at Seattle Yachts, Sean is going to give you guys your own full walkthrough tour today. So this boat is absolutely incredible. It's got a hot tub, so it's by far the hottest boat for sale in Seattle right now. It's absolutely gorgeous inside. It's got pretty much everything anybody could ever need in their life for a boat. So let's get aboard and show you around. You guys are gonna love it. She's beautiful. Hey guys, welcome aboard our new boat. All right, spoiler alert, we didn't get a new boat, but we do have it for the next couple hours, so I wanna take you on a tour so you can check out this awesome yacht. We're on board Hokulani. Hokulani is a 2007 Nordhaven 68, so it measures 68 feet in length. This is hull number five. I think right now they're up to like 36 or 37. 63 feet at the waterline, measures 20 feet 4 inches wide, so that's the beam, and the draft is about 6.5 feet. The no load displacement of the boat is 156,000 pounds, and she tips the scale fully loaded at just over 200,000 pounds. So, very impressive boat. Let's get started at the stern, and then we'll make our way forward through the boat. So the boat can be boarded either at the stern, otherwise there are boarding gates on the port and starboard side. There's a full walk around on this model boat and all teak decks, which is really nice. If you're planning to use the boat in Europe, this boat has a passerelle, uh, which is a, a platform that can be deployed out of this pocket of the boat. And then there is walkways into the cockpit on either side. So there's a door here or there's a door on the, on the starboard side. Nice swim platform, again, teak decks, stern staples. You got some rod holders, so you can do a little fishing while you're underway. The shore power is located at the back of the boat. I presume there's also shore power at the front, but here's a 50 amp with a Glendenning powered uh, cord retractor. And then on the starboard side over here, if your shore service allows, this is a 100 amp shore power connection. So up just two steps, we're now in the cockpit. Uh, there's a stern station as well as two stations up on the Portuguese bridge, wing stations for operating the boat. So in the stern station, there's engine shift and throttle controls. There's bow and stern thrusters. This is a hydraulic boat, so the bow and stern thrusters are hydraulic. Um, there's a follow-up rudder tiller, so this is how you can adjust the rudder angle. There is windlass controls, and these are for the warping winches. So if you're doing med mooring, you can adjust, uh, you can retract or pull in the warping winches from here. Also engine start and stops in the stern station. Continuing, there's a nice area for outdoor food prep. So nice solid surface countertop with a sink. And then off the starboard is a huge stainless barbecue. This is propane, large grilling surface. Looks like an infrared burner and a warming rack on top. This is where you can make all of your favorite steaks. Maybe grill some shrimp, burgers, whatever it is that you like to grill. Another warping winch 
here on the port side of the boat. These can also be operated with foot controls. There's a foot control just under my foot. And then I love this huge table where you can uh, dine outside. And this isn't the only place that you can enjoy in the exterior of the boat. As we work our way up a few decks, you'll see some other places as well. But large table with a uh, forward facing aft bench. And then you can also put a couple freestanding chairs on the front side of it so that you can get eight or 10 of your closest friends to join you while you're cooking a steak right off of the barbie. So before we head in, one other neat feature I wanna show you inside this compartment right here. Not only do we have a freshwater spigot, but there's also a compressed air spigot, and then there's a built-in pressure washing uh, connection as well. So you can take a wand to several different bibs around the boat and you have a integrated pressure washer. I think that's a pretty neat feature. Let's go ahead and head on into the salon. First impression is it's a really rich and warm interior. Really love the woodwork. I like how the headliners aren't the typical vinyl wrapped headliners. These are actually painted wainscoting, so that wood gives it a really nice look. Other uh, neat things about this boat being a larger boat, the furniture is freestanding versus being built in. So it's the type of furniture that you would have in, in a regular household. So a nice couch, two chairs to either side of the couch, a big ottoman in the middle. And it's really neat, there's little pull out footstools that come out of either side of the ottoman, which can be used as another place to sit down or as a footstool when you're sitting in one of these comfy chairs. When you're sitting in these comfy chairs, you're gonna be wanna watching TV. So on the opposite side of the boat, there's a large flat screen that extends out of this cabinet. So when you're not watching TV, you retract the TV and you have an unobstructed view to your surroundings. Also on this side of the boat is the formal dining area. So there's a dining table with six chairs surrounding it. So the galley has this nice island in the front of it with a bar where you can sit and eat a less formal meal, or you can simply sit here and watch the chef prepare you a meal. Above the island in the galley is cabinets to store all of your uh, china. And it's nice because there's actually doors on the front and the back side of it. So if you're setting the table, you can grab all of your plates from the front side of this and you don't need to walk back into the galley to grab them. Sean, what's for dinner? I don't know, what would be an appropriate meal on a Nordhaven 68? Um, steak and lobster. That sounds good to me. And those of you watching the video, write down in the comments what you would be eating if you were on this boat. Be curious to hear. This boat has all household appliances. So there's a nice Viking oven and range. There's a GE microwave above it. There's a dishwasher, which is really cool. So we wash all of our dishes by hand on our boat. A trash compactor. The boat even has a garbage disposal and an incinerator. In the galley, you'll also find a Sub-Zero fridge, your very own espresso station, tons of pantry storage, and large freezer drawers for all the goodies you'll be enjoying on the grill. So making our way forward to the galley and down just three steps, we are now in the owner's stateroom or the master stateroom. The stateroom is full beam, so really, really wide. And what that also allows you to do is have a king size bed. We have a full or a queen aboard our boat, but this is a full king size bed. If we had a boat like this, Elizabeth would probably have room for another dog to join us in bed. Hey, uh. hey there. Also tons of uh, storage in the stateroom. So there's lots of dresser drawers that are built in on the starboard and the port side of the bed. And then forward of the bed, there's more drawers on this uh, forward bulkhead wall. There's three closets. The closets are all cedar lined to keep your clothes fresh. So here's one closet. This closet actually has a safe down in the bottom of it. And then there's two closets uh, forward on either side of the bed. This is one of them and then a mirrored closet over on the other side. This is a really neat feature. So everything on a boat always needs to serve two purposes. 
there's that nice piece of artwork on this front wall at the foot of the bed. And when you turn on the television, the art rolls itself up and voila, we have a flat screen TV that we can watch football on. As we continue forward from the master stateroom, we're gonna go into the uh, master head. <laughs> we're now in the master head. Nice uh, sink with granite tops. This sink is really cool. It's a glass bowl and there's under countertop lighting. So there's a rope light that runs around the diameter of the sink. It's kind of a neat touch. A full stand up shower, all tile. I really like the tile and stonework in here. Full stand up shower with the- <laughs> Didn't even close the door so you don't get water With the seat. <laughs> and then as we continue forward, there's a toilet compartment. Compartment? Compartment. So you can lock yourself in there and, and do your business. Aboard this boat, you're never more than a couple steps away from a television. There's actually a uh, TV in the bathroom here, so you can watch TV while you're getting ready. Our next stop aboard the boat is we're actually gonna go down one level and we're gonna go into the guest accommodations. There's two additional staterooms down there as well as two additional heads. So let's head that way. Before we head down to the guest accommodations, I just want to stop and take a look at the ship's electrical service. So there's three main electrical panels. This one up here is for the 24 volt DC. This is a 24 volt boat. And then the two panels below are the AC ship system. So all the 240 volt service is on this left hand panel and all of the 120 volt service is on this right hand panel. This boat has a pretty impressive electrical service. Uh, for the DC side of things, there's 12 8D batteries. It has 1,560 DC amps of batteries. And then on the AC side of things, there's two generators on the boat. There's a 25 kW and a 20 kW generator. So there's enough uh, power there to power the boat wherever in the world you may be. You may even be able to power up a small country as well with those two generators. And then there's four 3.5 kW outback inverters. So you can run a lot of your AC service items uh, from your house battery bank. And then finally, since this boat is capable of going anywhere in the world, there's an Atlas power converting system on the boat. So you're able to change the frequency of the boat. So if you're in a 50 Hertz country, such as Europe, uh, the boat's able to accept that power and, and you're able to use that as your AC service. So at the bottom of the stairs, we'll go ahead and make our way forward. Making your way forward, there's a washer dryer. So it's a full size stacked washer and dryer, Bosch appliances. And then forward of that is another head. This is one of the two guest heads. So there's another stand up shower. There's a sink. And then just behind the door, there's a toilet. Continuing aft on the hallway are two spacious guest cabins. The one to port has bunked beds, a mounted flat screen TV, and ample storage. Across the hallway is a much larger VIP guest cabin with a full walk around queen size bed, abundant closet space, a flat screen TV, and an ensuite head with a separate shower. But the real fun begins at the end of the hallway. I bet you wondered what was behind the seat tight door. Welcome to the engine room. Come on in. This boat is a twin engine equipped boat. It has Lugger 1276 engines, which is a marinized John Deere engine. Uh, the 1276 stands for a 127 millimeter bore piston, and it's an inline six design. The engines are turbocharged, uh, wet exhaust. By being wet exhaust, there's not exhaust stack that has to work its way through the different spaces of the boat and exit out at the flybridge, which means you have more interior uh, volume within the cabin space of the boat. The engines are driving uh, twin disc transmissions and coupled to the twin disc transmission are three and a half inch prop shafts. So on the front bulkhead of the engine room, we have a series of battery disconnect switches and switches to be able to parallel the different battery banks. Above that, we have engine controls. There's actually uh, the ability to start and stop the engines from the engine room, which is nice if you're a service tech, you don't have to run up to the pilot house to be able to turn an engine on. And then there's also throttle control, so you can adjust the throttle of the engines from the engine room as well. 
and there is Murphy gauges. The Murphy gauges allow you to read all the electronic data coming from the engine, such as oil pressure, oil temps, uh, things like that. So this is super helpful when you're doing maintenance and troubleshooting on the motors. On this side of the forward bulkhead, you'll notice a series of valves. These are your fuel selection valves. So this boat carries approximately 3,200 gallons of diesel and the diesel is stored in three storage tanks. These allow you to decide which storage tank you wanna direct the fuel into the 80 gallon supply tank. And this is the large aluminum supply tank that feeds diesel to the engines and to the generators. On the opposite side, you'll see uh, more valves on the starboard side bulkhead. These valves are for the oil change system. So one nice thing on this boat is there's integrated tanks to hold waste oil and integrated tanks to hold your new fresh oil. So when you do an oil change, you can direct that waste oil into a storage tank on the boat and then draw uh, fresh oil from an integrated tank and you're not having to carry around uh, cans of oil and find places to store those on your boat anymore. Now it's all integrated. So now I'm just after the engines, I'm actually uh, seated on the sea chest. A sea chest is where uh, raw water can enter the boat and then be dispersed through all of the various systems within the boat that require uh, raw water for cooling and such. So a sea chest minimizes the amount of hull penetrations that you have by having the water only penetrate in one place and then being directed, um, directed to those different things needing that water from that central storage tank. These are the large wet exhaust mufflers for each engine. So there's one on either side of the boat. Just aft of the mufflers on the starboard side, this hydraulic power unit is for the stabilizer at rest system. So this boat has ABT active fin stabilizers, much like our boat. And the active fin stabilizers are driven by hydraulic power takeoffs from the motors when the boat is running. But when you're at anchor and one of the generators is running, this hydraulic power unit can supply pressurized oil to the fins and uses fin movement to stabilize the boat while at rest. So that's a nice feature when you're in a roll of the anchorage. The boat has two generators. There's a 25 kW and a 20 kW generator. This is the uh, 25 kW, I believe. And then as we go into the cockpit uh, lazarette, uh, just on the other side of this bulkhead, you'll see the 20 kW Northern Lights generator. Hey guys, I've left the engine compartment and I am now in the lazarette. So come on through this bulkhead and there's more to see. All right, we're now in the cockpit lazarette. We entered through the engine space, but you can also get into the cockpit lazarette through hatches um, out in the cockpit. A couple things to look at here. This large connecting shaft is connecting the rudders together. So there's twin rudders behind each prop. This shaft connects to these yokes, which turns the rudder stocks. Above the rudders, there's four 3.5 kW outback inverters. So this is allowing your 24 volt house battery bank to be inverted to supply AC power to your 240 and 120 volt AC loads. Uh, below the connecting rudder shaft is our water makers. This boat for redundancy has US water makers. There's two of them and they're both 800 gallon per day capacity. So you could make, I guess, as much as 1600 uh, gallons per day of fresh water. Just to the left of the water makers, this uh, blue unit here is a dive compressor, so you can fill scuba tanks. Forward of me is the second Northern Lights generator. So this is a 20 kW diesel generator. Behind me is a Cabola hydronic diesel heating system. So there's uh, seven zones of heating and cooling throughout the boat. All the heating is done by a diesel furnace where uh, water is heated up, it's a hydronic system, and then that water is delivered to the different zones and there's air handlers in the different rooms to heat them up. And then just aft of the Cabola heating system is compressors for the chilled water air conditioning system. So again, chilled water is put throughout the seven zones of the boat and then there's air handlers in each zone to cool down those zones. One last thing to point out before we leave is you'll notice there's a lot of cameras on this boat. There's actually eight uh, pan and tilt and zoom cameras aboard the boat. Some of them are mounted on the exterior, some in the engine room. And when we go up to the pilot house, you'll see where all of those are monitored. It's not every day that I get to admire the engine room of a 68-foot yacht, 
so I spent a few more minutes looking around before heading up into the pilot house. All right, so we've checked out the accommodations and the mechanical spaces. Let's go ahead and head on upstairs to the pilot house. All right, we're in mission control. This is the pilot house of the vessel. This is where uh, you operate the boat, one of two places. There's also a flybridge, which we'll go to next. But what a great view, just a commanding place to operate the boat. You see the long bow ahead of us. We've got two chairs behind the helm here, one for the captain and one for the mate. Be able to operate the boat. I love the electronics. There's four 24 inch flat screens to put all of your different navigational data on. There's actually three computers. It's a black box system. Most of the sensors and things that are attached to the computers are Fruno. So Fruno, GPS, radar, AIS, ICOM for all the communications, BNG, uh, wind instruments. It has a full Maritron system. So a lot of the boat's uh, sensors are put onto a network system and they're displayed on this screen. The screen all the way to the left shows the closed circuit TV monitors on the boat or closed circuit cameras on the boat. Again, there's eight pan and tilt and zoom cameras. We're running time zero over on this screen, which is our charting software. And then our Fruno radar right now is displayed on, on this right screen. But again, configurable to put any data you want on any of the screens for 24 inch displays. Above, over on this side of the upper helm is our monitoring systems for water tanks, black water, gray water. This boat has 150 gallons of black water, 150 gallons of gray, and then 575 gallons of fresh water, which is stored in two tanks. In the center of the upper helm is our engine instrumentation. So we have analog gauges. Right below that, we have our Murphy electronic gauges. And then on either side of the engine instruments is Fruno displays for GPS, wind, and different data that's being captured by the Fruno system. And then left of that is our hydraulics for the boat. And then our instrumentation for the generators for the 25 kW and 20 kW generator. Below that, we have uh, one of our ICOM VHF radios with Mike. Here's our ABT stabilizer controller. And again, this has stabilizers at rest. A big destroyer style wheel, hydraulic bow and stern thruster controls. Being hydraulic, these are proportional controls. So the, the further you throw the lever, the more thrust that you get from the thrusters. The boat's equipped with a yacht controller. Uh, which is really cool. That means you can command the boat from wherever you want. You don't have to be at the pilot house or the flybridge or one of the wing stations. You can, wherever you have this controller, you can operate the engines and the thrusters from. So, handy to have. Behind the helm station is a raised wraparound settee to starboard, an off-watch berth just aft of the settee, and a spacious home office nook over on the port side. And after you've had enough work, you're only a few steps away from the best feature on the boat. We're on the uppermost deck, the flybridge, and at this height, the views are stunning. We are so high off the water right now, I feel like we're looking over all of the rest of the marina. But this is another area where the boat can be operated from. There's dual helm chairs with all of the engine and navigational instrumentation to operate the boat from up here. There's a wraparound seating area with a dining table. And one of the coolest features on the boat is there is a jacuzzi up here. Yes, on the very uppermost deck of this boat, there is a hot tub. I can't imagine what it would be like to be in your favorite anchorage and be sitting here in the jacuzzi with a nice cold beverage just looking out at everything beautiful. And you don't have to go far for a drink because there's also a fridge up on this level. So hop to the hot tub, grab yourself a new drink and get right back in. Okolani has great outdoor dining and lounge spaces, as well as chest freezers located aft of the pilot house. 
At the forward corners of the Portuguese bridge, you'll find two additional wing stations and plenty of toys on the bow to help you explore when you're not aboard the boat. Well, unfortunately, that concludes our tour and our time aboard Hukalani. However, fortunately for you, if you're interested in this beautiful yacht, you can find out more about its details by contacting Martin at Seattle Yachts. And a big thank you to the current owners of Hukalani and Seattle Yachts for letting us have some time aboard this beautiful vessel. As always, we hope everybody has a wonderful week and we'll see you on the next video. Take it easy, guys. Cheers. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you'll never miss a video. And let us know in the comments if you'd like to see more boat tours just like this. We'll see you next time.